four times a week, five times a week, whatever you can do. Don't worry if you miss a day, it's still gonna help you. So I think it's very, very important. Um, the way that I use it basically is I use it for long-term hair loss, as you heard. Uh, the problem with all these medications is if you stop taking them, you do lose what you gain during the time you're on it. So let's say you take it for five years and you stop five years later, whatever that hair that you preserved or slowed down the loss will be lost in a matter of a few months to a year after you stop. But I help my patients psychologically and say, look, there may be hair cloning, there's other things coming around, new technologies, so please consider to take it because at least right now you want to look your best. And the way that I phrase it is, if I can give you 500 free grafts, would you take it? And most people say yes. Essentially that's what these products do. They give you more of a better result and I use that old Vidal Sassoon thing is that if you don't look good I don't look good so if you have a better result with your transplant with better uh, products that's going to help me look good it's going to help you look good and also I use it to stabilize so if people are shedding if people um, are moving into surgery and they've got all these miniaturized hairs that I worry about them shedding afterwards and losing all that hair I prep someone for about six weeks on minoxidil before I consider doing a surgery, especially if I see all these little vellus hairs that I worry about if I put grafts next to them or transplant them, they're gonna shed out and they're gonna go through this uh, effluvium or hair loss that's gonna make them feel very uncomfortable. So I think that's really, really important too is using it as a preparatory procedure for a patient. So I say, if, if you wanna try out whether you're gonna be compliant, do it now. It's gonna be good for surgery and if you stay compliant, great, and if you don't, so be it. Finasteride is a DHT blocker, blocks testosterone uh, conversion to DHT or dihydrotestosterone, which is the circulating hormone that causes male pattern baldness. It's a type, it blocks specifically type 2 5-alpha reductase, um, and it, it has been FDA approved again for the crown, but it works everywhere. So, you know, as you know, if it's clear for one area, it can be used in other areas because there's no reason to go through another FDA uh, clinical trial for that, although subsequent studies have really shown it works everywhere. Uh, it takes a little longer to work, about three to six months compared to minoxidil. Um, I personally believe that 60 to 70 percent of your, your retention is with finasteride compared to minoxidil, but I believe they're synergistic, and I like to use the analogy of playing a piano with two hands. So, you know, they, they work together and they work together better, and they've shown this. If someone takes minoxidil for five years, adds finasteride, they get a better result. If they've been taking both products, they stop one, they go down. They work through different pathways and they're synergistic. It's so important to understand this is not redundant. Side effect profiles are, you know, you hear about this, and, and I, I, the, I have them all signed a consent that Bob Bernstein's written that I think is very important because we live in a litigious society in America. If you're from somewhere else, maybe you don't need to have them sign it, but it, it's like a 10-page thing that says you basically can die, but you won't. This product is very safe. It is important to know that it's processed through the liver. You know, half the medications are going to be processed through the liver or the kidney, and you do have to adjust it for renal uh, dosing. Um, just to, the phase three clinical trials, just to quote some statistics here, um, it, it, so you understand what the original sexual side effects that were presented is 1.8% libido changes, which was basically against 1.3% placebo, 1.3% erectile dysfunction against 0.7% placebo. So these are really low numbers. 0.8% ejaculate volume uh, diminishment compared to 0.4%. And there's a, something called a nocebo effect, which means that if we think we're going to get erectile dysfunction, we're going to get it, which has is, is been shown that that's the case. So all comers, all side effects, 3.8% have side effects versus 2.1%, whereas 58% resolve with ongoing therapy. So you got to tell, I tell my patients, look, if you have side effects, stay with it because within a month or two, 58% uh, can actually resolve. Um, there is a 30 to 50 percent reduction of PSA. So in general, when someone is an older gentleman, I usually tell them, you know, maybe they have a higher chance of ED, so consider not taking it. You know, I'm always weighing things. If they're older and their hair is more stable, I'm the younger guy that's coming in. I'm obsessed with getting them on medicine. The older gentleman, I got to weigh how much. How much have they had lost? How much donor do they have? Do I think they require it? And I try to present, pretend I'm sitting there. Do I? Is it everyone needs finasteride? No, I want to sit there and say, well, maybe I wouldn't want to take it because maybe there's a higher chance of ED. Maybe there there are some PSA issues, things like that. And if they have prostate issues, I say take the Proscar. It's cheaper. And it's going to work for both. You know, the five milligram dose. 
So, um, and also just to let you know, the last year it's been uh, on generic form as well. Uh, it is teratogenic, so it's important you know that for women that are a childbearing age, it's important that they don't take it um, because they can have a, a male fetal abnormality, abnormality a hypospadia. Um, and so this, let's talk for a moment about this, what's called post finasteride syndrome, which is that if you stop medicine, you have persistent sexual dysfunction for, uh, ab you stopped medicine three months ago, you have persi persistent sexual side effects. Uh, this all started with the Journal of Sexual Medicine in 2001 and 12, and 2011 and 12, and Merck uh, put a package insert in 2012 that basically said that you know, okay, there can be this link, but all even the uh, North American Sexual Society has shown that there's no clear causal link, and that's important. You tell your patients that. In my clinical experience, I've had one patient from England that had it in his mid-40s, and I haven't seen anyone else complain of persistent sexual side effects, but it's important to at least bring up what's on the internet, because your patients are going to mention this. Other thing is that there's some confusion. In 2005, there was a prostate cancer prevention trial, or PCPT, that showed that the five milligram dosing had a 25% reduction of prostate cancer uh, against placebo, but there was also this question of whether there was a higher Gleason score, which means a higher, more malignant type of cancer being generated using uh, finasteride. There was, a, there was a thought that actually this was artifact, since the way that the biopsies are taken is random, and so when the prostate size gets shrunk and you, you take random biopsies, there's a higher chance of actually seeing these, these cancer risks. But the nice thing is in, the, in 2013, the most recent study showed no long-term mortality increase in the, P, the recent PCPT. Other things to know is that there's no increased breast cancer risk uh, that because there's some concern about that and the recent studies have shown there's no increased breast cancer risk. There, if someone is on an SSRI uh, for depression, they may raise their anxiety or depression levels. And the most recent five milligram dose uh, study in Korea in 2011 showed that there, there can be potential improvement uh, in, for, for women in postmenopausal situation. And so this has been a, a thing that's been back and forth whether it helps women or not. Most recent study says it can. Avidart is a DHT blocker that blocks both type 1 and 2. Remember, finasteride only blocks type 2. So it really reduces 90 some percent of fl uh, floating or cir circulating DHT compared to about 60 some percent for uh, finasteride. There's been f uh, 2006 phase 2 clinical trials that showed 33 percent greater improvement over finasteride, but only Korea is, has undergone phase 3 clinical trials that showed significant improvement in six months uh, without really an increased side effect profile. And in 2014, they had a multi-center study, multi-country study, nine countries, that showed improvement as well. The one thing you need to know about Avidart is that it is, has a much longer serum half-life of about five weeks, ten times longer than finasteride. Um, and because of that, if you're going to give blood, you have to wait six months after cessation to, to, to give blood because you can donate to a female that could take it. Um, but the side effect profiles are very similar, except there could be prolonged uh, redu reduction in sperm count. Personally, I don't really prescribe it, but it's something that someone's very desperate, younger patient, wants really a, a greater reduction in DHT, this can do it. Viviscal, I do prescribe uh, or do sell at my office. It's a marine extract, so if someone is allergic to shellfish, uh, you have to be careful. It works in both sexes, but it actually works better in women. What I specifically use it for is to, to uh, treat effluvium or unstable hair loss when a female is losing hair. It's two tablets once a day for six months, and I believe it works. And My patients have reported it works better than minoxidil for them, but I use that in combination with minoxidil and laser for females that are, that are, that are losing hair. Um, I don't have a lot of uh, knowledge of spironolactone. Dr. Rogers here has written a great review article in 2014 in the hair form. I encourage you to read that. Um, and it's, it's basically, it's a potassium sparing diuretic used for, for, for women that have, it has an anti-androgen effect, so this is for women only. And it, it's, for premenopausal women, it can be good, combined with uh, minoxidil, 50 to 100 milligrams for early cases, 150 to 200 milligrams for more advanced cases. And the, and the warning is that it shouldn't be done, taken with ACE inhibitors or SSRIs. You have to monitor your sodium and potassium levels. To me, this is a little bit more involved. I, I am really more of a surgeon, so I usually write a letter to a dermatologist and say, hey, 
uh, I think this, uh, this woman would be a good candidate uh, for spinolactone. Can you help me prescribe and monitor her and make sure there's no contraindications? Biotin is a food supplement. It, it, it is, I, there's no clear evidence whether this works. Um, I don't, it, this can be over the counter. You can get this on Amazon. I don't uh, routinely tell my patients to use this, but if they say, hey, is there something, any of the supplements, this can help uh, potentially, but I don't, uh, I don't suggest it per se. Salt palmetto is a uh, natural product that only one study that I know of in 2002 has shown it could help uh, in a randomized placebo-controlled study. Um, I don't sell it. I don't, I don't prescribe it. You can get it, I believe, over the counter, but I don't really uh, promote it. I don't know if it really works. You're going to hear all these things that patients will come and talk to you about. And the reason I mention all these is because someone's going to say, hey, doc, what do you think about nioxin? And, you know, I don't know if it works. I, I think, I always say, if it's not going to hurt and you want to use it, use it. And that's my philosophy with this. You know, it's a botanical product that works uh, through helping with amino acids and vitamins and things like that. And I, I don't know if it works, but it may. And, if you, and I always tell my patients, try it. Tell me if it works. If it works, I want feedback. And that's something where you learn. Laser therapy, I have a whole lecture on this, uh, so I'm not going to get into this, but in my clinical experience in the last two years has really helped my practice a lot in, in stabilizing hair loss and, and growing hair um, with or without other medical therapies. Uh, and I'm just giving you an overview. PRP injections have really helped uh, definitely surgically. Uh, in terms of a standalone procedure, I'm still working through some protocols for a definitive answer to the, to the extent of, of its benefit, but I will say that I have a whole lecture on this as well, so I'm not going to get into this. And uh, don't forget topical fibers. I mean, my patients have this wow effect when they look at this and they go, oh my God, I have hair now. So this is great for that younger patient, particularly who can't have surgery, who's so depressed, and you put this in their hair, all of a sudden you see the smile on their face. This is amazing. Or, you come, they, they, or they're shedding after a surgery, they're panicked. I tell all my patients before surgery, by the way, we've got this fiber that can help you. If you start to shed or if you start to thin a little bit, we can fix that problem. That way it's in their head and they, they, they think about this before they actually uh, come to, uh, I mean, after the surgery, so they don't get worried about this, the shedding. So this is, you know, I've given a lot of medications up here, and, and they're meant to give you an overview. And this is going to be on my YouTube channel, so if you said, my God, he's covered a lot of ground, don't worry. My goal is to give you an overview, because you're going to be asked this. Hey, doc, what do you think about biotin? What do you think about salt palmetto? What do you think about all this stuff? And so this is what I use on a, on a practical daily basis, and some Viviscal as well. Um, this is just to tell you, or remind me to say that also you got to remember medical therapies, hormone replacement, if it's a low thyroid, if it's a low iron level. And we ha I have a whole female lecture I'm giving on this, so I, just to, to remember that. Um, there's prostaglandin uh, synthase uh, uh, modulators are coming out. That, like, the, right now they're in phase two clinical trials through Allergan, and bimatoprost may be very helpful. My friend actually likes this. Right now they just had to raise their dosing up about tenfold to make it work a little bit better. But I think this could be something that's very, very cool. And just to let you know, um, prostaglandin alpha F2 stimulates the uh, the hair growth and prostaglandin D2 inhibits it. So there is a lot of cool stuff, I think, in the horizon. This is a future idea. So a patient's going to ask you, hey, what do you think about Latisse? What do you think about prostaglandin and stuff? I read about that on the internet. That's so you understand where we are going in the future, in the immediate close future. So I always say, remember medicine, okay? Don't just be a surgeon and say, I got a cut on this person. If you're forgetting medicine, you're forgetting half of, half of the equation. And I like to tell my patients who are OCD, like myself, hey, Listen, just because you missed a couple doses of finasteride or minoxidil doesn't mean you should stop. Do whatever you can. And I make it easy. It's all in the brain. If you say, you know what, you know, I can't do this, you can't, right? But I say it's as easy as brushing your teeth. Put one hand, putting some minoxidil while you're brushing your teeth and pop a pill and you're gone. It's so easy. So I like to just end with this is that I try to divide patients so I know how to spend my consult time with them. If they're young and they really shouldn't have surgery, I spend 95, 100% of the time with them on medicine. If they are 30 something and they've got some loss and they're on some medicine, I mean they're thinking about medicine, I spend maybe 50-50 with them. I may introduce some surgery, I may introduce uh, medicine, I, I spend half the time with each one. If they're like 65 years old, they've got really amazing donor hair, uh, I may not even talk about medicine. You know, I may just talk about it briefly. Just say, hey, you know, if you want a little better result, you can use some medicine, but if you don't want the hassle or trouble, it may not be important for you. 
And, and that's that gradient. So if you sort of mentally think of it in red light, yellow light, and green light, you can sort of divide your time effectively during a consultation. Thank you. So we're going to have uh, Dr. Elliott come up. And do you have your uh, candidate? Can we have the house lights up, Dale, Zach? Uh, no, I, I need the gentleman I saw.